Hey everybody, this is uh, Darren Sabater again with the uh, Bay Area News Group, Mercury News, East Bay Times, here with Joseph Dykus and Mike Lefkow is back. He is out of jury duty. Mike, welcome back. Thank you. Yeah, just a few things happened while you were away. A um, couple of good football games on Friday night. Uh, were you uh, were you surprised by? Um, by Sarah rallying from two touchdowns behind in the fourth quarter to uh, to beat De La Salle. Yeah, I thought De La Salle was going to win that game. When they were up uh, 21-7 in the fourth quarter, they're at home. They're playing before their own crowd. Uh, well, I mean, I'm sure there are plenty of Sarah fans there, but they're at home. They have a two-touchdown advantage. Yeah, I thought they had that game wrapped up. Right, and uh, Sarah uh, under Patrick Walsh. I mean, you know, they – they fit the uh, Patrick Walsh profile. I mean, that gutsy, gritty, uh, I mean, never say die. Um, and they showed that on Friday night, which was very impressive uh, in front of a national television audience. Um, we'll have uh, the De La Salle pick later on for this week, and we'll have the Sarah pick and all the other picks. But uh, as we always do here in, on this show, we'll, uh, we'll start off with um, – some of the hot button topics. And I, I think we have to start with De La Salle uh, losing for the third time to a uh, regional opponent in less than a calendar year after having gone 30 years yeah. and 318 games without losing one. Uh, Joseph, you brushed up on De La Salle this weekend. You went and uh, read I, the great Neil Hayes' book. Um, I did. Look at this. Yep, I bought it. Uh, uh, you, you picked it up in, um, in Danville, I believe. Danville, um, yeah. Shout not out necessarily to, uh, De La Salle country, I, I don't think. But anyhow, no. you picked it up and uh, and you read it in two days. Um, what do you know now about De La Salle football that you didn't know on your drive from Tennessee out here to uh, to take this job? Well, I I was under the impression that De La Salle had been a school since you know the 1920s or 1800s or whatever, it had been just a traditional powerhouse uh, for a century. Uh, did not realize that before the great Bob Lattister got there, it was just a pretty average program. I'm sure Lefty can speak more to it. That's how uh, Neil Hayes described it in the book. Was it, was just, it was an okay program. It wasn't dominant. They would win, but they weren't. You know, they weren't the powerhouse number one team even in NorCal that they they became over the next uh, decade once Lattister got there in '78. Right. Uh, so he, before, oh. he gets there. What in was his first year? 79? I seventy nine. I eight or seven. Yeah, yeah seventy nine. Yeah, I think it was seventy nine. Yeah, 79. Had, and and here's here's an interesting fact that uh, that the great Damon Esper provided uh, uh, on Sunday evening in an email to us. Uh, De La Salle had not lost consecutive home games since. The 1978 season, which was the last season before Bob Lattiser arrived. So, uh, I mean, that's how historic that that win was by Sarah. Um, Lefty, I mean, you know, De La Salle always had that mystique about him. I mean, even in tight games uh, against quality opponents, we always just assumed that De La Salle would find a way to win. Um, do you think that St. Francis loss last year as historic as historic as it was numbers wise given that it was 30 years 318 games took some of that mystique from de la salle and now you know we're seeing in these tight games it's anyone's game um you know we saw it in the Folsom game at the end of last season in the regional where Folsom comes back from 14 nothing down in the first half and wins uh I believe it was 28 27 de la scores late goes for two and gets stopped at the goal line and then we see last week, um, you know, De La Salle lose, uh, loses to Sarah by three. So they've lost three games now to regional opponents by a combined seven points. We'd probably be having a different conversation if they had won those games. We'd be saying, man, that mystique is alive, well, and geez, it's breathing uh, fire still. But what do we think, Lefty? I mean, um, is that mystique no longer there? I don't know that the mystique is no longer there. I don't think it's it's as strong as it once was. Um, it got tarnished a little bit by St. Francis. It got tarnished a little bit more by Folsom. And then uh, what Sarah did last week, that might have tarnished it more than all the than the other two combined. 
I mean, Sierra came from two touchdowns down in the fourth quarter. They scored the last 17 points in the game. And, I mean, you just can't blow a game like that at home if you're, if you're De La Salle. That, to me, is going to tarnish their, tarnish their reputation a little bit more than the first two games. Joseph, what do you think? I mean, you're you're the newcomer here, but what do you what do you think looking from the outside? I think that I mean, like we, me and you talked uh, off the off the call about how Dale Sal all they they've lost, but they've lost really close games, right? They're losing these games with two seconds to go. Um, I think the mystique or whatever you want to call it isn't going to truly die until they just get soundly beat by a NorCal team um you know by two touchdowns or something because right now i mean they're losing these games on like if three different players over the last three games that they've lost go differently like you said they're still undefeated in norcal play right um, if matthew doherty cool. doesn't if matthew doherty doesn't throw the 16 yard touchdown pass with 16 seconds to go right if, if zeke barry doesn't cross the goal line i mean if he crosses the goal line instead of getting stopped at the goal line on the two-point play if they don't turn the ball over late, or if they get that uh, that screen pass that was dropped, that would have mm -hmm. probably gone for a touchdown when they were trying to protect a seven point lead. It was third and long, and and that play probably would have gone. Guy would still be running. Um, so if those plays go De La Salle's way, we're having a different conversation today. Yeah, which I think just shows how unrepeatable the streak really is because. At the end of the day, these are high school. These are high school athletes, right? They're going to make mistakes. They're going to things aren't going to go their way. And for it to happen for thirty years or however long the streak was, I don't think we're ever going to see anything like that ever again. I well, I, I, agree. I think when you talk about mystique, I, I'm not sure the mystique is totally diminished either. I mean. We're talking about the three teams, St. Francis, Folsom, and Sarah. Um, how would other – I mean, are the other teams in the EBAL going to no longer feel intimidated by De La Salle? Are there any other public or private schools in Northern California that would no longer feel intimidated? All right, maybe Central Catholic up in Modesto, maybe St. Mary's of Stockton. But, I mean, I, I – I, I don't think De La Salle's mystique is totally diminished. I think right. that there's a level of teams in Northern California, and maybe it's four of them, St. Mm -hmm. uh, St. Francis, Sarah, Folsom, and De La Salle that are playing on one level and everybody else is on a different level. And maybe all those other teams would be intimidated and feel the mystique of De La Salle. And they still do have a streak. I, I'm not, sure off the top of my head what that number is but it obviously is now 31 years in which they have not lost to a team from the north coast section which is the section they play in uh pittsburgh has had a number of opportunities and is probably going to get another opportunity later this year clayton valley did tie them back in the 24 2004 season right lefty mm -hmm. when yeah right, the same year tied. i think they lost to bellevue they had their 151 game yeah. streak ended and then clayton valley tied them but a north coast section team has not beaten de la salle since Pittsburgh did it, uh, Patrick Walsh's junior season at the Oakland Coliseum, right, Lefty? Yeah. Yes. So uh, that is a uh, you know that is a storyline moving forward. Given given the team that Pittsburgh has, we we all or not all of us, Lefty, you picked Pittsburgh to yeah. win last week over Hend over Liberty of Henderson, Nevada, and I thought that was one of the more impressive outcomes of the weekend with Pittsburgh going down there into San Diego at the Honor Bowl. And uh, coming back with a 30 to two win, um, Jaden Rashada throwing three touchdown passes and, and uh, he threw for 298 yards in that game. Um, Pittsburgh, obviously, I mean, there's a long way to go. Pittsburgh still has to play Folsom. They're going to play Mac and they're going to go through their league schedule. But uh, that Pittsburgh De La Salle game, if it happens in the North Coast section playoffs, I mean, maybe that'll be a, maybe that will be something to, to yeah. keep an eye on. Well, I think what's happening is we're waiting to see which teams can join the three that beat De La Salle and what teams have reached a level where there no, there's no longer a, a De La Salle mystique. I mean, I still think when you look at the EBAL, is San Ramon Valley or, or 
Monta Vista or California, teams like that, can they overcome the De La Salle mystique? Right. Um, you know, I, I, even some of the schools in the West Cal, could Bellarmine beat De La Salle? I don't know. They almost they almost ended the streak in 2010. Yeah, yeah. but that's 12 they, they years missed, later now. They missed an extra point uh, in overtime. Um, speaking of the W Cal, Sarah seems to be, you know, with their two wins, although they easily could have been two losses, but their two wins in the record book, beating Folsom 17 to 12 and and De La Salle 24 to 21. And given what happened to St. Francis last week, losing the Monterey Trail at home by three touchdowns, um, De La, or Sarah at this point um, looks like the clear favorite to win the yeah. WCAL and the CCS Division One Championship, which would which would mean Sarah would end up playing one of the one of the big boys, Modern Day or Bosco again, uh, down there in Southern California. What do you make of Sarah Lefty um, being two and zero after that schedule uh, Patrick put together for his team? Well, I mean, I think it's a heck of an accomplishment because they went on the road in both games and beat two very good football teams. So, I mean, it's a heck of an accomplishment. I mean, when I saw that schedule, I thought he was out of his mind. But, um, yeah. you know, because I, I still kind of, kind of believe in the ABC type college scheduling where you, you schedule one or two teams that are really tough, then a couple teams on your level, then maybe you schedule a cupcake just so your kids can have an easy week, build some confidence and not have five injuries. So, I mean, you got to hand it to Sarah. They're, they're playing great football right now. No doubt about that. Yeah. Um, and I'll be at I'll be at that game on Saturday. So. You, you will be, and we're going to discuss it here in a little bit in our picks. But before we get to the picks, uh, Joseph, I know you wanted to touch base or touch on uh, the game you were at on Friday night. You were at McClyman's in, uh, in Oakland to see them to McCly uh, play Bellarmine in a thriller. It was, it was a it was a it was a game where, on one hand, I felt like I felt like McClyman's should have just dominated that game uh Bellerman had had an injury a couple injuries uh midway through the first half early third quarter but at the same time McClyman's they made some mistakes uh they committed some penalties and Bellerman I think is probably the best 0-2 team in in the bay because they they lost to MA and the jury on Dickey show week one and mm -hmm. they they really I don't think should have been in the game against McClyman after a certain point, and they just stuck around and had a chance to to win. They had the ball. Uh, McClyman at Mac had kicked a field goal, and they were driving, and it looked like, oh, they're going to score a touchdown and win. Uh, so, yeah, no, I think Bellerman. I think they're they're going to get some wins pretty soon. Um, Maybe gonna, uh, probably this Friday, I would think. Uh, and then they go in, in the W Cal play. But you were also impressed with McClyman's and, and Coach Peters. And you're getting quite an introduction to the Bay Area, given that uh, McClyman's honored uh, the, the legendary Bill Russell, who passed away recently before the game. So that must have been quite a quite a scene out there before that game. It was. You had not just Coach Peters. You had, uh, I think it was Will Cherry. You had Antonio Davis, two former NBA players. You had um, a, a lot of many figures from that community were at the game. I think you had a council member from, from Oakland. Uh, they had this giant banner that they were, that they're going to put up at the school where he's the one of the administrators told me we're going to put it front and center. So uh, everyone can see what, what Bill Russell did and what he accomplished. And I have a feature I'm working on should be out tomorrow. Um, just about the the legacy of Bill Russell and how he continues to help McClyman students uh, even now. Very good, and we can check that Probably out. We should do that for Frank Robinson too. He was, he was pretty good <laughs> yeah. in, in the, his. The sport. baseball great, yes. Uh, you can check and they out. Play on the same basketball team. Yep, Joseph, your story will be on the Mercury News and East Bay Times website uh, at some point, probably tomorrow. So check mm -hmm. that out. Um, Anything Did else you guys want to address? Did the players from either team know who Bill Russell was? What? Did the players from either team know who Bill Russell was? Uh, yeah, I think they did. Um, okay. I, I joked with uh, with Coach Peters. I, I was like, I'm sure some of them just know him from the NBA 2K uh, video game series. Um, 
but yeah, uh, Coach Peters was like, yeah, you know, people back in my day, we we I know who uh, you know Bill Russell was and Vita Blue and Robinson and all those guys are. He said, I don't know if the kids these days know quite how great those those guys were. Uh, anything else you guys want to discuss before we move on to the picks? No, let's uh, well, let's make our picks. I'm ready to not be. Uh, I'm 15 and 15 right now. I think in terms yeah, of picks. Through two weeks, you uh, you went from six and nine in week one to nine and six in week two. I matched my nine and six from week one to go nine and six again. And lefty, you went ten and five. Joseph had the big uh, the big pick. He had Sarah beating mm -hmm. De La Salle. Uh, you and I both took De La Salle. But lefty, you had Pittsburgh winning, and Joseph and I had Liberty of Henderson, Nevada. So, yeah. um, but anyhow, uh, let's get going. I didn't do a ton of research like I normally do. So maybe, Joseph, if you have some uh, blanks to fill here on a couple of these games. But we can start off with game one on the list, Friday night at Los Gatos. These games are all scheduled for – or most of these games are scheduled for 7 o'clock. But because of the heat, it's possible that some of these games could be moved back to yeah. later in the evening. But we got Live Oak at 2-0 uh, going to Los Gatos. It's going to be a major step up in talent for Live Oak, which uh, ham uh, hammered uh, gun last week 55 to nothing. They're going to be going up against Los Gatos at 1-1. One one. Um, I got Los Gatos. I mean, who do you guys yeah. got? Los Gatos. <clears throat> yeah, I think Los Gatos wins easily. All right. Uh, game two on the list, San Ramon Valley at home against Elk Grove. Elk Grove lost to um, MA last week on the road, 40 to 20. They're coming back to the Bay to play San Ramon Valley, which had a very impressive season opening win at Vintage. And they had last week off. So they're, they're coming off a bye. San Ramon Valley at 1 0, home opener. I'm taking the Wolves. So I'm taking San Ramon Valley to go to 2 0. Who do you guys got? I'm gonna go with San Ramon Valley. I think they're a pretty good team. Yeah, I, I, I went back and forth, but I think I'm gonna go with San Ramon Valley as well. Uh, Joseph, you'll be at this game um, to see Luke Duncan, the uh, UCLA commit quarterback out of Miramar. Mm -hmm. You're gonna tell us all about him um, in your game story here on Saturday. Or yes, Friday, late Friday, Friday night. Friday night. The game is on Friday. It's uh, in Arinda, it's Miramane at home playing Skyline. Both teams are undefeated. Skyline at 1-0, Miramane at 2-0. I'm taking uh, Mir Miramane to go to 3-0. I'm, I'm expecting them to win fairly comfortably in this game, but we'll see. Joseph, who you got? Yeah, I've got I've got Miramane as well. Uh, Coach uh, Jack Tram said he, does, he expects Skyline to try to use their size to, I guess, uh, hold the ball maybe keep Duncan off the field, but I still think, I think Miramani takes it pretty easily. Lefty? Yeah, I think Miramani comfortably. Uh, game four on the list, it'll be De Anza at home to see the team that uh, Joseph just covered, McClyman's. McClyman at 1-0, De Anza 1-0. Uh, in the Max Preps era, De Anza is 0-3 against Mac. Uh, they lost to him 22-8 to last year. <clears throat> I'm taking Mac in this game. Uh, I think it'll be fairly competitive, but I think Mac will probably have too much for De Anza. But uh, like I said, I think it'll be it'll be fairly competitive. Uh, Lefty, who you got? Yeah, I would go with Mac. Um, I, I agree with you. This game might be competitive, but De Anza's not going to beat McClellan's. Yeah, I think I think Mac. I think Mac uh, takes it. Man, I think we're agreeing with all of our picks so far. Well, uh, it happens sometimes, but uh, maybe we'll maybe we'll go separate ways on this next game. Game five on the list in Hayward. Bill Jensen will be there for us. It'll be Mount Eden two and zero at home to play Tennyson two and zero. Last year, Tennyson beat Mount Eden twenty three to twenty, and Tennyson in the Max Preps era, which goes back to twenty o four is nine seven and one against Mount Eden. So these teams have been fairly even over the last 20 years. Um, I'm taking Tennyson to go to 3-0. and I'm taking Tennyson with the road win at Mount Eden. Joseph, who you got? I'll take Tennyson, too. Lefty? I think Tennyson wins a close game. I just think they have a little better talent than Mount Eden does. So all three of us going Tennyson. Uh, game six on the list. 
Lincoln, San Jose at home playing Aragon. It'll be Kevin Collins, the coach at Lincoln, going up against his really close friend, Steve Sell at Aragon. Lincoln is one and seven against Aragon in the Max Preps era, but they have not played since 2015, which was a 42 to 15 Aragon win. Um, Lincoln coming off the big bone win. Aragon lost its quarterback, I believe, last week against Monterey, and they only won seven to six. Lefty, who you got? I'm going to take Lincoln. I think they're, I, I've been impressed with their first two victories. Joseph. I'm going to take Lincoln as well. Man, we are all on the same page. We did not share notes beforehand. We no, all we did not. Notes, but I'm taking Lincoln as well to go to 3-0. and uh, Game seven on the list, Santa Teresa um, playing at Midi. Midi has been one of the uh, pleasant surprises of the uh, 2022 season, off to a 2-0 start with wins over uh, Palma, which now looks even more impressive given that Palma beat Sacred Heart Cathedral on Friday, and then they uh, Midi hammered. Uh, Mountain View on the road. This will be the one night game uh, on the, uh, in the season for Midi playing uh, at home, home night game. They, they play night games at Foothill College that are technically home games, but this one will be on the Midi campus. I am taking Midi. You guys going Midi too? Yep. Yeah. I, mean, I just don't think Santa Teresa's got <laughs> the talent yeah. to be Midi. Yeah, I'll take Mitty as well. I do think that we're going to – I think that we'll uh, we'll differ on some of these next two picks, though. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, game eight on the list. Akalani's going to Sheldon. And Sheldon has won three games by the scores of 78-19, to 56-6, and 42-14 to 14 under uh, Coach Chris Nixon, who does great great job out there in the Sacramento area. Sheldon at home. Akalani's, I think, is is uh, very good this year, but I'm taking Sheldon to go to 4-0, taking the Sacramento team to win this game. Lefty, who you got? Yeah, I got to go with Sheldon. I was talking to uh, Akalani's coach Floyd Burns said last week while he was watching film, and he said they're off the bit. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking at I'm looking at Sheldon's stats right now. They average uh, eight yards per carry. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I and it, I mean if Akalani's playing at home, maybe maybe he might take Akalani's, but they're going on the road this afternoon. I think yeah, I think Sheldon wins that one. All right, <clears throat> game nine on the list. Rockland, another Sacramento area team at two and one, traveling to play Antioch. Antioch coming off a tough loss last week in – was that overtime to Vintage? I think it was yeah, overtime. overtime to Vintage. Um, Rockland has a loss to Turlock uh, on the season. I'm taking Rockland in this game. Lefty, who you got? Yeah, I'm going to go with Rockland. Uh, Antioch I'm, – I'm sorry. Antioch was ahead 16 to nothing last week against Vintage and lost it. So you're taking Rockland? <laughs> yep, I'm taking Rockland. Thanks. I'm taking Antioch. You know, they Ooh. were up. Up by 16, <clears throat> they they fumbled it away. But you know, I think this week they're not. I think they're gonna think they're gonna win. This is where uh, I make up a a little bit of difference on you guys in the standings. Yeah, you this might. Is, you might. Uh, this is game 10 on the list out of 15. Clayton Valley Charter, another really really good 0 and 2 team with losses to Del Loro Loomis last week, 31 27. Then they also lost to a really good Salinas team. They're going on the road to play Canyon Springs of North Las Vegas, a team that Coach Murphy seems to schedule on a very consistent basis. Um, yeah, I think the Canyon Spring coach uh, played for Murphy at. Uh, did he? Mr. Valley, yeah. Um, so Clayton Valley is 4 0 against Canyon Springs. They beat them 35 6 in 2019. Um, Canyon Springs is one and one. I think this is going to be the turnaround trip for Clayton Valley. I think the team is going to bond, get closer together, and uh, this is going to turn around their season. I'm looking for Clayton Valley to win on the road in probably 150 degree heat in Las Vegas. I mean, do they play indoor? I don't know anything about Canyon Springs, North Las Vegas. I assume they play outdoors, and maybe this game will start at like 11:30 at night. I don't, I don't know, but anyhow, I'm taking Clayton Valley to win. Who do you guys got? Clayton Valley. You know, we, we keep picking them to win. Eventually, they're going to win a game, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Cal Preps picked uh, Canyon Springs to go 2-7 and seven this year. They're they're not a real good – I don't think they're that good a team. 
Uh, Creighton Valley has to win this game in my mind. <laughs> if they don't, they've got some problems. Yeah, this is this is must win t uh, territory. It's must win for Coach Murph yes. and the Ugly Eagles. Uh, game 11 on the list, Bellarmine, 0 and 2. We talked about them earlier. The probably the best 0 and 2 team. Joseph said in the Bay Area, Bay Area, but they might be the best 0 and 2 team in Northern California. Playing San Leandro at 1 and 1. This game's going to be at Burrell Field. I think these teams played a really good game last year that Bellarmine won. I'm taking Bellarmine to get its first win um, before W Cal play starts uh, in two weeks. I'm taking Bellarmine to beat San Leandro on Friday night. Who do you guys got? I'm going to go with Bellarmine. Uh, Bellarmine and Joseph? I think Bellarmine wins, and I think they 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 win convincingly. All right. Game 12 on the list, the Pittsburgh Pirates and Jaden Rashada traveling to San Ramon to play California. California, uh, another surprise 2-0 team given the amount of talent they lost from their roster uh, last season. Pittsburgh, in my research, is – Four and three against California, but this is the first meeting between the teams since 2015, look like on Mac Preps. Uh, Sounds about right. Pittsburgh won that game 28 to nothing. Um, Going to be a lot of orange out there, right, Lefty? Uh, there certainly will. A lot of orange. Yeah, both uh, teams. Who, who do you got, Joseph? I'm taking the upset. I think California wins. Whoa! I think this is like this is gonna be a classic uh, letdown game. You know, I think I I told you uh, off the record, I guess. That I think Pittsburgh has the best win of any any Bay Area team going to going to San Diego and beating Liberty of Nevada. But I think this might be a letdown. So California is a really talented team, and I think they somehow get the win. And I, on that same conversation, I disagreed with you and said that Sarah had the two best wins in, in you did. We, I, I, to, uh, and uh, so, so just wanted to set the record straight there. Uh, Lefty, I'm going Pittsburgh in this game. Who do you got? Yeah, I'm going to go Pittsburgh, but I think this game might be close. But in my mind, I mean, <laughs> I don't think Pittsburgh can lose this game to California. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying they can't lose the game, <laughs> but – if Pittsburgh's going to be a top-level program, they can't lose this game. This is a game they have to win. Uh, yes, it is. And, and Dan Calcaterra was a terrific coach. But we're, you cannot lose this game. We're going to have Curtis Pashelka out there. So <clears> he'll tell us all about it. But uh, I agree with you. This is a game Pittsburgh has to win if they're going to if they're going to play with the Folsoms of the world. Right. And then later on, De La Salle, they have to win this game. So Right. No, I mean, this, is kind of, this is a must win for Pittsburgh. Uh, game 13 on the list. So uh, rematch of last year's game that we talked about earlier in the show. St. Francis at one and one coming off a, a, a not a great loss at home. 21 point loss, 28 to seven to Monterey Trail Elk Grove, a team that De La Salle beat on the road by 16 in week one. And De La Salle coming off a loss to Sarah. I think this is kind of like a double whammy for St. Francis. A, De La Salle was going to be ready for them no matter what, given what happened last year. And now De La Salle is coming off a loss. So, uh, you know, two definite motivating factors for De La Salle. But you got to say that, you know, if St. Francis is the top level program that we think it is, they got to be pretty upset too after losing by three touchdowns at home right. uh, game scheduled for 7 30. i talked to uh leo lopos at de la salle the athletic director today it's possible the game could be pushed back later in the evening if the uh depending on what the weather is if the if it's uh um too hot they'll they'll move it back a little bit like like other games in the area um I'm taking De La Salle to get back on track. I think they they win this game and go to two and one. Lefty, who are you taking? Yeah, I'm taking De La Salle. I could see a running clock in the fourth quarter. Whoa! Ooh. I'm not going there. <laughs> I, I just Dang. think that De La Salle is going to come out snorting fire, breathing fire. They're going to be angry. They're going to be upset. And I, I think they just have a better team than, than – say, I think St. Francis is a little down. You just year. gave me the lead quote for the prediction write-up. Wow. What do you think? What do you think, Joseph? Is that the lead quote? Yeah, that's a lead quote. I mean, <laughs> look, I, I until about five seconds ago, I had St. Francis 
<laughs> picked, but I'm kind of like, you know, lefty. I, I don't think there's going to be a running clock. I, I don't think it's going to be that bad. Um, but I, I, I think De La Salle, and like you said, Darren, they're going to be motivated. I mean, they're already, they're already motivated, but they're going to be pissed off now. Um, they're not, I don't, I don't see them losing two games at home. Uh, in the same back. season, back to back. Season back I just think St. Francis is a little inexperienced this year. And then, you know, that said, they do goes have, down, goes they do have Matthew Doherty. And they have Andrew Atkinson, the receiver. Yeah, right. no, I know. Big time. No, I know. I've seen them both. Uh, so, so we're all taking Dela in yeah. this game. Okay. Uh, only two more games left. We got uh, Saturday afternoon. Joseph, you're going to be out there to see our new number one ranked team, the Sarah Padres, playing their home opener against Central Catholic Modesto. Central Catholic, uh, usually a very, very strong program. Uh, they mm -hmm. they have losses, though, in back-to-back -back weeks, losing to St. Francis, where they coughed up a lead, I think, on the road in, yeah, in St. Francis' season opener. And then, um, and then they lost to... Uh, um, who they lose to last week? Oh, uh, St. Mary's? St. Mary's of Stockton. St. Mary's mm -hmm. of Stockton beat them fairly comfortably, right? I think yeah. it was forty-seven-seven or something like that. It was more than comfortable. It okay. was running clock territory there. Okay. Uh, I I think Sarah wins his home opener on the app in the afternoon there at uh, in San Mateo at the Brady Family Stadium to go to three and zero uh, going into WCAL play. Lefty, you with me? Yeah, I um, after I saw how badly Central Catholic lost last week, I said, "Yeah, this is going to be a a Sarah easy Sarah, not an easy Sarah win, but I think Sarah wins comfortably." Yeah, I know. I'm mean, I'm going to be the one out there uh, baking in the sun at one third in the afternoon. I think uh, I'll watch. I'll be watching Sarah win by three or four touchdowns. There you go. We what have about one running more? clock. Running clock. Mm, maybe um one more game last game on the list uh joseph picked these games for us this week lefty mm -hmm. these are the games that he picked uh amador this is an interesting matchup amador valley at one and one their only loss was the seven to three to el cerrito going on the road to play menlo school uh yeah. in a saturday afternoon game menlo school at two and oh um i went back and forth on this game i ended up going with the home team menlo school to win but uh, this should be a, a interesting, competitive, good game. Uh, Joseph, who you got? I've got. I think I've got. I've got Menlo School. They're going to go three and zero. I think they they're knocking on the door of uh, being ranked. There you go, Lefty. Now, I think Menlo School's got a real nice team this year. I think they're going to win that game. All right, Lefty. Did you and I differ on any pick? I think. I don't know. I don't think we did. I, we oh might have been. Uh... God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't catch you this week. <clears throat> no, not if we picked all the games the same. Oh, wow. I, I think next week we got to get some games. It was pretty tough this week. I went through the schedule. There weren't a lot of games where you're yeah. like, oh, my God, that's going to be a nail biter. Right. No, there weren't. Um, you know, I think the game that I might have had the most doubt about was Lincoln Aragon. Yeah, yeah, I had some doubt there, too. Um, if Aragon doesn't have its quarterback, that that's a big difference. That's true. That's true. Um, be sure to check us out, mercurynews.com, eastbaytimes.com. Uh, get a digital subscription. Uh, I think they've got a deal going on, a Labor Day deal. So check it out. I think that deal runs through the middle of September. Uh, you can get uh, our coverage all season long. Yeah. Um, lefty, any, any parting words? No, um, you know, I, it'll be interesting to, it'll be interesting. I guess I'm kind of interesting now in that Dale South St. Francis game that I threw out that running clock stuff. But uh, no, I think a lot of the games this week are kind of slam dunks. Yeah. Jo Joseph, any parting words? Um, You know, other than, uh, you know, I'm hoping to catch you guys uh, little by little by little by little. Um <laughs> Just to say that the athlete of the week poll is still open. When this gets uploaded, it should we should still have what five or six hours probably. That's true. All the way till five o'clock right. on Wednesday. And uh, to any voters who are listening out there, sending an email saying who you are voting for does not count towards the vote. You need to vote in the poll on the website. And yeah, the poll is right there at the bottom. Just scroll down and vote. 
and athletic directors and coaches, if you're listening, get those nominations in by 11 a.m. on Monday. If you want uh, your athlete, student athlete, represented in the poll, so yes, please do. Please and please upload your stats to Max Preps. That helps a ton. There you go. Yes, when you have a small staff, it helps with these coaches or team statisticians or athletic directors, whomever. Put your stats on Max Preps and uh you'll get more coverage so anyhow that's it for uh for this one week three uh we'll see you guys next week